is Ogden, Utah. This is where a lot of it started originally. A picture of the Taysom School. It was named after my grandfather Taysom. And he donated the land for it, and then they built it. And my father installed the big bell in it. And he was one of the secretaries. And then we have some notes about what went on there. And we used to, the three of us used to go to school in the morning. And in the winter, the snow was so deep, it, it snowed right up over the fences and the fence posts. And we would, mother dress us warm and long underwear and and the long coats and our curls would be hanging all covered with frost and we'd walk through Grandpa's field and go to that school and our nose holes would be stacked right together when we got there. It was so cold, but we didn't think anything of it. Our, some of our friends rode horses and some came in a bobsleigh and we had a teacher in there and I'll never forget her. Her name was Mrs. Brainerd. And uh, that's where I started loving books, in that little library in that school. I'd hurry and get my lessons done, and then we could go to the library and pick out a book and read it. She wore a red satin bandana around her head and never changed it all year. But we loved that school and was so proud because our grandfather helped uh, donate money and, and gave the land for it. How many uh, uh, other students were in the school with you about? Well, each row was a grade, and so it went up to about uh, the eighth grade in there. And there was a piano in there, and uh, and we had a beautiful blonde teacher that, uh, Mrs. Loveless, and she would play the piano and sing. And uh, she, uh, two holes, leg for each hole and the board to sit on, you know. And that's the first time I ever seen the four letter word printed in great big writing on the lid that came down over that. And I thought that was terrible. I went home and told mother and she told me never to tell anybody and never to say that word. <laughs> she ought to live now. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I remember the old school teacher that taught us the song that we said, oh, for the swing of how would you like to go up in the swing? Uh-huh. Up in the air so blue. Oh, I, got, oh, I do I think got it's the pleasantest thing ever a child could do. Uh-huh. Up in the air and over the wall till you can see so wide. River and trees and country and all over, over the, the countryside. Country till I look down on the something blue, down on the world so green. Up in the air I go flying again up in the air on the side. This is 10th Street. That's the road going up to the sand hill down in the distance. This is where the old model dairy used to be located. Well, this is Grandma Faulkner's home. <clears throat> it was built in the year of 1918. Uh, and Grandpa and Dad worked and laid the brick on it. And they didn't have it hardly finished when he died. But we, uh, we often lived with Grandma off and on during their early married years. Now, what, what year did Grandpa die? He died in 1918. Okay. And, and then what year did you move in here? No, uh, I think we stayed with her in 27 for a while. <clears throat> when we first got married, Dad was working on that uh, St. Mary's Academy in Salt Lake, and I went there and we stayed in the boarding house for a while, and then we got us a place to live, and, and I got homesick for Ogden. My parents were leaving, 
And so I came back here and stayed with Grandma, and he stayed there and worked. Well, hi! This is looking east on Cross. The corner of Cross and Grant looking east. We, we got a chance to rent this house for $15 a month. And uh, we bought all new furniture and moved in here. We really had it fixed up real pretty. And uh, Joy was born right there in the front room where that big window is. And that was in uh, 27 or 8? I guess it was 28. Dr. Ward was the doctor. And it was cold, it was in June, and we had an old uh, heater, a, a wood burning stove, and he told Daddy he better start a fire, and so he did. And he was so thrilled when she was born. <clears throat> And then uh, we lived here quite a while, quite a few years. And then we, uh, we used to have a nice big garden out in the front of the side. And then those big Madonna lilies, big patch of them. We always had a lovely garden. There used to be a fence around it here. And uh, you were born, Paula. That's Dick. This, yeah, Dick was born while we lived here, but he was born in the old D hospital. When he was 10 days old, I brought him home to this place. Aunt Hazel Hammer met me at the hospital and got him a little pink wool hat. We put it on him. When he got home, he was so itchy and broke out with a rash, and we discovered it was the pink hat he was wearing that we had to take it off. <laughs> and. Uh, we lived here and uh, he learned to walk and play and the kids pushed him in the doll buggy around here and tipped him off and tipped him over and bumped his head but now, <laughs> he'd fall and they'd make him shut up and put him back in and go again <laughs> <laughs> was now was uh, any of the other kids uh, besides joy and i uh, born while you was living in this no, house no uh, sue was just little and and uh, we had an old outside toilet and and her and Joy go out there to the... You mean D? D, I mean. Uh-huh. Now, D was Joy, born up on Cross, the yeah, house you lived in. Yeah, up the road, you know, uh -huh. little house, but it's been torn down now. Okay. But she moved here when uh, she was about uh, a year oh, old, and yeah. then we lived here until Joy was born, and you were born in the hospital. But my gosh, this brings back memories to me, that door that goes into the bedroom and the kids, the way they play here. Now this is the famous roadway through the motel that uh, Lou and Frank... That's a halfway house now for... They, uh, they fought over the right-of-way here a couple of times and tore it down and Mother ripped it out of the wet concrete one time and threw it to keep that open. It's all closed up now. Yeah, and I made sure I drove through there all the time. Uh, Grandpa Faulkner built for his mother. He went to see her one day. She lived on Wall Avenue. And when he went in, the roof was leaking, and she had pans set in there to catch the rain. And he said, I'm not going to have my mother live in a home like this. So he built her this lovely home. They painted over it. It was brick and moved her in it. and. Uh, and she lived there, and he was to get the home if she died. And his younger brother came in and talked his mother into giving it to her. So uh, he got the home, and uh, and Miss had built it, and he wanted her to live happy, and she did. But she changed her mind and let uh, Merck Pierce's friend, his name was Franklin Pierce, and he got it. Now the one next door, did he build it for anyone in particular or was it a speculative uh, type of he venture? He built that for somebody, but I don't know all, I don't remember all the history on that. Did he build them about the same time or yeah. do you know? Okay. He built it for somebody else, but uh, I don't remember anyone I, only that Mrs. Kellis that did that. The Risk and Faulkner built them both. Uh -huh. So had the Pierce line, if the Pierce line came in through...
This is the old vacant lot across the house from 955 Kiesel where many a ball game uh, was played by all the members of the neighborhood. On this little bike on here. And we moved in there and uh, Dad and I had uh, start, uh, worked for Grandma and got that little corner lot. And he started working and earning the brick and we lived there and then we could run down and help him. And Dick had a little trial and he used to get down there on the mortar board and just flip it the mortar around and help his dad <laughs> lay the brick and I think I was pregnant with Connie when I lived there and I remember uh, Joy and Dee found a little knot hole in the floor there and they would drop things down through there and I'd have to put a basket under there to catch my spoons and forks or thread or anything they could get through the knot hole and I'd try to get them to go downstairs and bring it back up, but they got it in their head there was bears down there. My first and memory. And they wouldn't go down there. But we didn't today. live there too long. And now that's on the corner of the uh, 10th and Kiesel, right? Uh-huh. Okay. And, and then as soon as we got our little home built there on 982 Grand, I, we moved out of that and went up on the ground. Okay. Okay, now, where are we at now? Now, this is the first home we owned at 982 Grant. 982? Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, Dad uh, and I took an old team of horses. An old German loaned it to us, and we went up Morgan Canyon, and we'd uh, go and get a load of rock in this old wagon and haul them down the canyon and come and... He hired a, his cousin to come with a scraper and help dig it and then he dug the rest of the basement out by hand and then he laid it all uh, the whole foundation and the basement is made from these rocks he brought from the canyon then he worked at the brickyard and for some of the pay he took these brick and they'd bring them home and uh, we built this uh, home and this is where Connie and Beth were both born when I lived here and then he's got a, a fireplace upstairs and downstairs. Now, now wasn't uh, Wayne built, uh, born when uh, we lived here? He was born in the hospital and then brought home. Here. Yeah, but we was living here, right? Yeah, we okay. were living here. And uh, Brent. no, Brent was born in the house over there. But uh, we were so thrilled over this house and then we got scarlet fever and I couldn't go to the hospital when Beth was born. So uh, Dad ran down the street to get a doctor and we didn't have a phone. And I had Beth for a uh, got back. She was born in this house and I was alone and couldn't get a doctor or anything. And finally Aunt Sarah got a doctor and came and he took care of us. But uh, Dad had... Uh, uh, this was all empty lots here, and we didn't know what number, and so Dad and I stood out here on the street one day, and he kind of made up a number and judged about what it would be, and we went down to the dime store and got these numbers and just tacked them up there, 982, and it's lasted all these years. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, Beth is uh, in her 50s, and it, and the people have painted over it since, but there's a nice big uh, fireplace downstairs and upstairs, and then we, all that used to be garden, and he had that old brick. Uh, On the south of it used to be empty, and that's where a garden was, right? Yeah, well, he grew uh, our potatoes and all our winter stuff there, and then he had a strawberry patch over here. And then he had his own irrigating system. He, he drove a well with an old pitcher pump, and then he built a little reservoir and bricked it up, and it was a swimming pool for the kids and the neighborhood kids, and they'd swim in there. That was out and back by the yeah, alley, right? Yeah, it was out and back, and it'd warm up, and then at back night, there. he'd uh, unplug a little uh, a pipe there, and he had the rows all fixed, and it'd run down in the garden, and then he'd pump it full of clean water, and the kids could swim in the day, and 
We just had wonderful times. They loved it. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, uh, we when we first lived here, we had an outside toilet, and then we got uh, the bathroom put in. And in order to uh, co connect to the sewer, you had to buy this expensive pipe, and we didn't have the funds at that time, so he got some old uh, stove pipe and made forms, and he would pour every night after work. He'd pour so many of these forms and then let them cure. And then we, uh, it seemed like to me, that we run it over and connect it on Grandma's sewer. And I think that's the way it is, but he made all his own sewer pipe that way. And uh, just pouring the forms and connecting them. And, and then we had our, uh, before they put the sidewalk in, we had cherry trees and everything planted and come to find out when they spaced it off, uh, our cherry trees were out in the, in the street, and uh, it looks like they've taken them all down. Then uh, Grant, uh, looking across the street, that's where the uh, German family buckets full of green tomatoes from Dad. The top of the sand hill where the uh, Smith family lived. Down the hill from that is the sand hill road where we used to all coast way down keep on going and and sometimes uh, if we run and slammed real hard we could get all the way to Kiesel. Well this is the, did I say it was 9.55? This is 9.55 Kiesel, right. Well this was the home we thought we really hit the jackpot when we built this. We uh, bought all new furniture when we moved in and Dad worked so hard. And I'd come over and pick out each brick I wanted to match along and lay them on the wall and he'd lay them. <laughs> and we got the lot, we watched and they, it was advertising the paper for taxes. So we bought it and, uh, and we wanted a big window in the front and we wanted it all done in white and blue in the kitchen. And, Boy, we finished the basement all up for bedrooms and the utility room and we thought we were so smart because we even had a bathroom down there. <laughs> and uh, we just thought we were on all new furniture, all new furniture and beautiful curtains. And, <clears throat> and Grandma Faulkner, she didn't like it because I had it all done in white and blue. She said there was too many kids to put their fingers on things. <laughs> Then we had a terrible windstorm after we'd lived here, and it uh, it took the roof off of the house and blew the, the gable in. And Brent was just a baby, and the bricks fell right in the bed, but it never hit any of us. We got up in the night, and Wayne was just a little boy sleeping downstairs, and we all run over to Aunt Sarah's basement, and the electric wires was just whipping and flashing blue lights and and we were in our bare feet and there was nails and everything but we we made it to Sarah's and when we got there Wayne wasn't with us so Joy says let's go back mother he's asleep downstairs and Joy and I come tearing back in all the wind and the branches breaking and everything and he'd slept through the whole thing he didn't even know that we'd left, and there he was, safe as could be. But he's never forgiven us. But uh, when I tell him about it, he says, the damn bunch left me. <laughs> left me asleep there, and I was just a little kid. <laughs> we had some wonderful memories here. I can remember I've when they uh, dug the basement by with a team of yeah. horses and a, and a scraper type of device. Yeah. Mrs. Rice has got that picture, I'll have to get it, but we lived here, uh, let's see, how many was born? Brent was the first one born. Brent was uh, born here. Seemed how like long did you live here before the roof blew up? We was just here a year. And so Brent... Everything was brand new. Well, when you moved in here, was you pregnant with Brent? Uh-huh. Okay. And so he, uh, he was just the baby, and he was up in this front bedroom up on this 
on he that was uh, north side. The bus right between us, right yeah. in the front bedroom. Yeah. Yeah, right up there. We heard a noise, and uh, Dad got up, and he said uh, the, uh, the and the roof had blown a block away. Let the chimney go. Just yeah, the I'd... chimney was standing, and uh, we thought uh, the house couldn't be repaired, but. The guy that built it, that uh, Vern, Vern Murdoch. Vern Murdoch and his son came back and he he guaranteed his work and put it all back together. He says, now you can't drive, drive a freight train to it. So Mrs. Rice just let us go in and look at it. We're inside 955 Kiesel in the living room, looking at the fireplace, of course. Uh, Parley Murdoch, a local carpenter, Dad hired to do all of the trim work, uh, trimmed the fireplace, and Dad paid him a dollar an hour, which was an unheard of wage in those days, and all of the neighbors thought Dad was crazy for paying that much. Inside the fireplace in the firebox, Dad had run some water pipe that were connected to the water heater to help heat the water in the winter time. In the kitchen, the uh, kitchen cupboards are pretty much the same. There's a big picture window at the breakfast nook. Mother always seemed to like uh, big picture windows in her houses. We're looking west down where the trees are. It's where the Japanese farmer used to have his place. And going down south, that dirt road, there used to be a dirt road there. And over this way was the what we call the cliffs. And it dropped down, well, it seemed like 20 or 30 feet, and down below was the old fire station down there. No. It's all gone now. Right. Shopping and this road mines. right here, going back down on 10th, is where we used to sleigh ride and go all the way down. And Grandpa Faulkner, his kids. Come on over this way, Mom. They used to have those big schooners and real big bonfires up here. And, and the whole neighborhood had come out with their kids. And they'd uh, had those long schooner type things and they could coast clear to 10th Street. Yeah, we'd go all the way down to Kiesel and Washington Street. And as you'd walk and back up and with your sleigh, you'd put your tongue on the runner and it'd stick. <laughs> oh, they had wonderful times. And that's where the Smiths You never lived. had to worry about your kids. They played on the sand all the time. Oh, all this where the, the Mormon church is up here now it used to be. The old sand hill. Old sand hill, and it, it just had trees, different types of trees up here. And wild roses. And, uh, yeah, wild roses and... Uh, 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 li uh, li lilies, seagull lilies. A lot Indian of seagull lilies arrow up here. And used sweet. to be an old fort. Gather up. We used to, when we was kids, used to gather up a, a lot of old Indian arrowheads up here. Bones. But this was the, I got bones too. This was the favorite place to play. We used to have rubber gun fights up here at 10th Street against the 8th Street. <laughs> We'd plan it and make guns and so forth for a couple of months in advance. Do you remember the elephant walk? Walk. I don't remember the elephant walk. The what, tell us about it, Joy. The side of the hill was heavy clay sand, and there was a little narrow path along it, just big enough for one foot, and we called it the elephant walk. And we'd go walk along the edge of that cliff on that little narrow thing, and it, that we could never... We're at the Kiesel Farm Road, one way. House out at Washington Terrace. Okay. Now, when did you move out here? Well, we built this in uh, what, 50 or 51. I think it was 51. And Dick and Joe and Dad, Will's Paul, old cool guys, helped us for the foundation and. If the base 
and look, we were so thrilled to get these 10 acres out here. We had the kids a horse and... Remember how people thought Dad was crazy to come out here in all the yeah. sand and, and oh. buy that 10 acres? Oh, my mother said we was going to do this day. She refused to move out here. But we were so thrilled to, and we, we do our own plans. To an architect to get them checked out. We wanted the house uh, set across from an angle so we could see all around, you know. We sure worked hard on it. And we, were just, uh, we just got it all built. And, uh, just got in, we didn't have the furniture, curtains or anything up when Grandma Faulkner died. And so, uh, now, Debbie and Greg were born in while I lived here. Debbie and Mike, Greg? Uh-huh. Mike was just a baby, from, uh, walking, just walking when I moved here. And then uh, Greg was born, and then uh, we went to Washington and come back, and Debbie was born while I lived here. And Joel and Joy lived here a while, too. Yeah, Brett was born when we lived in this house. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, oh, I, I hated to leave this house. I loved it more than anything. It was all paid for and clear. And they just, uh, they yeah, had to yeah. bank me a bed in the back seat to drive away. I couldn't stand to look back. Now, what year was that when you left? Well, let's see, it's far Debbie was born. We was in Quincy a year and then come back, she was born. They moved back in. Um, 1955. 1955, you you left for uh, Quincy, Washington. Well, uh, they well, came back. We lived there a year before Debbie was born. Then we come back in the fall, and she was born in the next spring. And then Dad went back to the farm, and I stayed with her for a while. She was born while he was on the farm. Was it you and uh, Dee, your mother and you and Dee that took me to hospital? Okay, now wait. Oh, I love this home. This and the one in San Diego. I think I love more than any of them. And Dad built two churches. Yeah. See the church over there? He we practically sold donated the land. Well, it was owned by Brigham Young, and when we got reading, uh, what do you call it, the escrow, or the, the history on the property, mm -hmm. uh, they were looking for a place to build a church, and I said to Dad, you know, this is owned by Brigham Young and then his children. I bet the church would be interested in this, so he, uh, when he went to the high priest meeting, he told them about it. And they came right out and they loved it because it had streets going all around it. So they bought it and they built that beautiful church over there. And then we had a lot of lots to sell. And we had to donate a street, but where'd that street go to? Right there. Oh, it's right there. I wonder how many lots and acres now. I don't know. Now, uh, and when you lived uh, here, Joy, what, what, uh, what kids of yours was born here? Um, we moved out here when David was about, um, just before he was six years old. And Brett was born when we lived out here. And then Mother and Dad moved back from Washington, and uh, we moved. And they were here for, uh, I don't remember how long, probably not all that long. And then uh, they sold and moved to Washington permanently. And that was um, about probably 1956 or 57. Well, we, we went back and had Debbie blessed there. She was just a baby. Okay. But you came back and forth for a while. Anyhow. Yeah, we built that new house on the farm. The winters were so bad there. But, oh, we had fun building out here. It was a, it was just a, a dream come true when we built that house. We had a big place.
go. There's the Ogden Tiger. the old fountain. Still running. The, uh, if you look in the base there, there's the uh, old tree stuff that used to come up out of and they encased it with some uh, concrete and tin. Had a drink out of there and it's still delicious. Nice and cold. How many years has that been running? As long as I can remember. View of the Ogden Valley from North Ogden Cemetery. 